Today is all about the hay. Many newcomers to farming and animals are confused and sometimes overwhelmed by all there is to know about hay. What was once thought of as simply animal food becomes more complex when we learn that hay comes in many varieties. And some varieties are good for some animals, but not for others. Yeah, nutrient and protein values can vary widely depending upon the mixture. First cut, second cut, third cut, is there a difference? And which do I need? So for those with cows, horses, goats, sheep, pigs, or whatever else, here are some basics you need to understand about hay and what to look for when obtaining hay for your animals. Hey! Yep, that's the topic of today's video. We're the Hobby Farm Guys. Brian, Steve, and Eric behind the scenes. Thanks for tuning in. Many animals on the Hobby Farm graze. Here in Idaho, and in many parts of the world, pasture for grazing animals is only available for part of the year. During the long, dark, cold winter, foraging opportunities for these grazing animals can be scarce. Enter hay, food storage for critters. Just like I harvest tomatoes when it's warm and sunny, and then can them in bottles for use during the winter, hay is forage that's cut while the weather is nice and growth is good, and then put up in store to be utilized in the winter or when fresh forage isn't available. Hay falls into several categories, grass, legumes, cereal grains, and mixtures of those. We'll begin by reviewing some of the basics about these different types of hay, and we'll start with grass. Some of the more common grass hays include timothy, brome, orchard grass, and bluegrass. In some parts of the country, fescue, reed, canary grass, rye grass, and Sudan grass are common. Typically divided into warm or cool season varieties, cool season grasses grow in northern areas where summer doesn't get too hot and include timothy, orchard grass, and fescue. Warm season grasses include brome grass, switchgrass, big blue eastern, and coastal Bermuda, among others. These grasses produce well compared to cool season grasses during hot and dry weather or on soils that don't hold moisture well. Grass hays have a medium to low protein content and a relatively high fiber content compared to other types of hays. Grass hays are also low in calcium, zinc, selenium, and vitamin E. Grass hay can vary greatly in nutrient value and palatability depending on the variety, where it was grown, and the stage of maturity when harvested. The nutritional value of hay is related to leaf content. The leaves of grass hay have more nutrients and are more digestible when the plant is immature and growing, and more fiber when the plant has reached full growth. Early bloom timothy grass is around 9.8% protein, and early bloom orchard grass can be 11.4, but wait until late bloom and those values drop to 6.9 and 7.6% respectively. Those needing higher protein and nutrient levels often look to legume hays. Legumes used for hay include alfalfa, various types of clover, bird's foot trefoil, vetch, and others. Legumes tend to be rich in nutrients and provide more energy than grass hays. Alfalfa, which may have double the protein of grass hay, is one of the most fed legumes and is widely available in many parts of the U.S. Alfalfa is often cut and built multiple times over the growing season. Alfalfa stems serve as structural support for the plant and become coarser and more fibrous as the plant grows. Like with grasses, the digestibility, palatability, and nutrient values are highest when the plant is young and still growing, with more leaves and less stems. If buying alfalfa hay, you'll want to know if it's first, second, or third cutting, or, or later, and what stage of growth it was harvested. Depending upon your area, first cut alfalfa can be stemmy and often contain weeds. Second cut alfalfa usually has a higher percentage of stems compared to leaves as it's been growing quickly in the summer heat. Third cut alfalfa typically has a higher leaf to stem ratio because of the slower growth during the cool part of the season. And you'll want to know not only when in the year it was cut, but also when in the growth cycle it was cut. Early bloom alfalfa, which is cut before the blossoms open, has about 18% crude protein. Alfalfa cut at full bloom drops to 15.5% crude protein. There are also cereal grain hays, such as barley, oat, wheat, or rye, which are also types of grasses. Cereal grain crops can make good hay if cut while still green and growing, rather than waiting for the seed heads to mature for grain. Grain hays tend to be higher in nitrates, so it's often recommended to have them test for nitrate levels prior to feeding to avoid potential problems. Keep in mind, we're talking hay here, not straw. 
Hay is made from the stems, leaves, and seed heads of the plants that are fresh. It's cut and baled when it has the most nutritional value prior to harvesting seed heads. Whereas straw, it's also made from the stems and leaves of plants, but after the plants have been allowed to mature and the seed heads have been harvested for something else. Straw is simply the leftover stalks and has very little nutritional value. You'll also find hay that's a mixture of the types we've already discussed, such as grass and alfalfa mix. But which hay do you need? Hay needs can vary depending upon the animal, time of year, and other factors, such as if the animal's lactating and providing milk for babies. If needed, when changing an animal's diet, do it gradually, especially when changing from a grass to a legume. Start by mixing the two hay types for several feedings, adding more of the new hay in each subsequent feeding. The animal's digestive tracts must adjust to the different types of feed. Changing from grass hay to alfalfa hay all at once can change the environment in the rumen of cattle, sheep and goats, and in the cecum of horse, disrupting the microbes to help the animal digest their feed, resulting in sickness or bloat. Horses can do well on grass or alfalfa hay. Keep in mind the nutritional needs of your animals. Good grass hay is the most ideal feed for mature horses, for pregnant or lactating mares, or young growing horses. Some legume hay added to the diet provides additional protein and higher levels of other nutrients. Whether you feed cattle can generally tolerate dustier hay and even eat a little mold without problems. However, the quality of the hay you feed will also depend upon whether you're feeding mature beef cattle, young calves, or dairy cows. Mature beef cattle can get by on rather plain hay of any type, but lactating cows will need adequate protein. Young calves have tender mouths and can't choose coarse hay very well. They do best with hay that's soft, that's cut before bloom stage. It's not only contains more nutrients, but it's also much easier to eat. And dairy cows need the best hay with the most nutrients per pound since they're producing milk. Most dairy cows won't milk adequately on grass hay or on stemmy coarse alfalfa that contains few leaves. A dairy cow needs to be able to eat as much as possible and she'll eat more fine palatable alfalfa hay than coarse hay and she'll also get a lot more nutrition from it. When it comes to goats, legume hay such as alfalfa, clover, or vetch work well for kids as well as pregnant and lactating does. Mature goats do well on a grass legume mix in some grass hays, but they won't generally eat coarse grass hay. If fed coarse hay, they may strip and eat the leaves, but leave the stems. Sheep, like goats, prefer fine leafy hay and will not eat coarse hay. Immature grass hay or leafy alfalfa is usually the best for sheep. Mature sheep can get by on good quality grass hay, but lambs do better with legume harvested while still growing so it has finer stems. Pigs leak hay too, but they usually have to be trained. Alfalfa hay or a legume mix works well, but pigs' stomachs are different than cows, goats, or sheep, so hay is often reserved for older pigs and not fed to young pigs who are still developing. Well, there you have it, a quick down and dirty on hay. Did you learn something new? If so, we hope you'll give us a thumbs up and maybe even hit that subscribe button. Also, share your hay knowledge and, and experiences in the comments section so we can all learn from each other. Thanks for watching, everyone, and keep on hobby farming.